Oh, I think that's the thing is that you don't get confidence by thinking about having confidence, you know? You get confidence by action. Becky Lynch made WWE history in 2019 as the first woman to win a WrestleMania main event and she became a Triple Crown champion. The man is back on top! I completely destroyed myself. I had this then sense of ego, like, look at how disciplined I can be. I am so much better than everybody because I have this discipline. But ultimately, I was like dying on the inside. Then I got on TV, one of the worst debuts of all time. Really? Awful. And so I failed epically, publicly. On TV? On TV. Ooh. But hey, if you can come back from that, you can come back from anything. Let's go. There is such a level of trust in what we do. And I think I broke that trust for several people and then it just didn't feel good. It yeah. just didn't sit right with who Rebecca Quinn is. The Rock, he... Um, what was the thing he said to you maybe behind the scenes, backstage, that no one else got to really experience, but he said to you that impacted you? One of the things that he said to me, even saying it now, just makes me feel... That'll get me. Uh, yeah, so... Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness. Very excited about our guest. We have the inspiring, the man, Becky Lynch in the house. Rebecca, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Very excited about you being here, and big congrats on all your success. I love your story because you were not an athlete growing up, really. Um, I think I even saw that you were a flight attendant for a little while. You dropped out of college. You didn't. You, you failed PE in high school, and yet... In 2019, you were named one of the top female athletes in the world, which is really cool. You're a WWE superstar, and you are the man. And I'm just so glad that you're here because I got to connect for a few minutes beforehand. And I love seeing people like you with a good attitude, good energy, and a good heart win. Ah, thank you. So congrats on everything. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, uh, many things, but one of the things is around your belief in yourself. You came from Ireland, you got into wrestling at an early age, but it, it sounded like you had a lot of challenges, like you were into a little bit of drugs, a little bit of alcohol, you were kind of like whatever with school, but eventually you got things in order and you became very disciplined at your craft and very focused on your dream. How did you learn to build confidence during a time of maybe not feeling that confident growing up? Gosh, I think that's, you know, I think that's the thing is that you, you, you don't, you don't get confidence by thinking about having confidence, you know, you get confidence by action. And I never had confidence before I started wrestling. And I think that's why I was always trying to fit in or, with the with the kids that were drinking and that would make me cool and then I'd be smoking and it would take the edge off from the self-consciousness and everything that was going on at home at the time and uh and then when I was 15 and I had just failed PE I was getting ready for my junior cert which is I'm not sure what the equivalent is over here but it's your when you're 15 you're doing these exams in school that at the time they make it seem like if you fail these your life is over. Really? But, but yeah, you, the, all the pressure that they put on you in school. This will determine this the rest is, of your yes, life. Yes, exactly. Where you and go to school and college and everything else. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's how, and that's what, what I felt like. And at the time, even though I was a little degenerate and I, <laughs> I wasn't doing good in school and I was drinking and I was smoking, I was doing everything that I shouldn't be doing. Like I still had ambition. I still wanted to do something good in my life. I still wanted to be a lawyer or, or something productive in society and uh and and I realized on one random Monday when I wanted a beer uh, that at, at 15, 15 at 15 that I needed to turn my life around I needed to do something different that I couldn't I I, I couldn't keep do going down this pathway of failing PE and just not applying myself to anything and so I started looking up like different kickboxing things because gyms weren't a thing in Ireland back then there was like two or something you know there was there was there was this big gym but it was too preppy it was too preppy and I was an alternative kid you know the ones with the, the black lipstick and the yeah. dog collars and all that kind of stuff and uh and so I the, the, you know going to a gym just seemed too mainstream for me too too Jane Fonda uh -huh. and so uh then one day I go in to the computer room 
because in 2002 everybody had a computer room and uh, my brother's looking up this website and it was called Hammerlock and it was this uh, wrestling school over in the UK and I was like what are you, what are you doing there and he was like well I, I, I was thinking about training as a wrestler I, instantly I had this jealousy this 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 feeling of I need to do that and uh, I was like, oh, you, you're going to go over there? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was like, there's no way. There's no way my mom is going to let me go over to the UK to train. I'm 15. I'm also a degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's aware. She's aware that I'm going off the rails. And then, he, and then the promoter there wrote back to him to let him know that there was two Irish lads that were going to be open in the school, like an hour away from us on wow. the train. And so that's how I found out about it. And he told me that. And I was like, oh, I want to go too. He was like, no, you're not going. You have to be 16. And I was like, I'll lie. And he was like, no, <laughs> I don't want to have to look after my little sister. I was like, you won't have to. Lying. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I went down there and, uh, and I started. And that was it. All of a sudden, for the first time in my life, I wanted to apply myself to something. Mm. I wanted to get better at something. I saw progress in in each training session and that built confidence because not only was I applying myself and getting better at something and seeing results, but I also now had this community. Mm -hmm. And I think there there, there and, and there was also this feeling of like I'm I I'm different, which I you know, I always felt a little different, you know, I wasn't wasn't the cool kid, even though I tried to be but 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 now I had this confidence in my difference you know mm. and I was the only girl there too I was the only girl in a group of lads and I was hanging with them or maybe not but I was felt I was like there yeah, yeah, I yeah. felt like I was and so that gave me confidence that I could do this and I could set myself apart and 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 there was something more to me mm. and then I just continued on there I never thought or not that I never thought. Maybe I had like this this suppressed dream, but I still thought I was going to be a lawyer and do something realistic. Really? Until I was like 17. And it was the first time I had uh, played the heel role, the bad guy role. And I was teaming with my brother. And when you're a heel, when you're the bad, you can do no wrong. Because you can just have fun. You can mm. taunt the crowd. You can be an idiot. And uh, that's your job. It, yes. There's such freedom in that. Wow. There's such freedom in that. Uh, and I came back and I was like, this is, this is, this is what I need to do. This is what I'm meant to do. This is what I'm going to do. At 17. At 17. And then by 18, dropped out of college, moved over to Canada, wrestled around Canada, around America, around Japan, around Europe. My visa ran out from Canada I had to move back in with my mom and my mom god bless her like she's only ever wanted the best for me and the best in her eyes was not being a wrestler especially back then because what I wanted what I visualized for myself was was me being seen on par as The Rock as Stone Cold Steve Boston as Mick Foley as all these lads that I looked up to but if you watched TV and you watched how the women were booked, there was lots of brown panties matches. There was mud wrestling matches. That wasn't anything I wanted to do. That was certainly nothing my mother wanted me to do. And uh, 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 and so... There wasn't opportunities for women to really be stars back then. Not... When you started. Not in the way that I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Not in the way that I wanted to be. And so, so I started looking at... Uh, the women's promotions in Japan and, th and then I went over there and I wrestled in Japan and uh, I got assigned to this advertising agency over there that wanted to promote me as this big time wrestler but then when I came home and I had to live with my mom again she's going what's your plan 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 because she always wanted a plan but with wrestling and I suppose any artistic endeavor uh, I genuinely think wrestling is an artistic endeavor um you can't necessarily plan it. <laughs> Why you, not? Why can't you plan it? You can have a, a rough plan, but so much is out of your control, you know? You can work towards what you want. 
but you you can't decide when you're when you're going to get on somebody's radar mm. what they're going to be looking for you know i think it's the same with 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 say for example uh, an actor an actor can mm-hmm. do the best audition of their life but they might have brown hair and the person is looking for blonde hair and so they see this great audition but that's not what they were looking for on mm-hmm. that day and uh and so i started to believe that if i looked a certain way that that would give me that that was my plan really? that that is how i would get there because all these women looked like figure competitors and they were beautiful models and you know it was just a regular average looking girl with a a a bit of a pair of biceps on me and decent set of shoulders but like at the time you know there was there was enhancements that Uh were standardly involved in the hiring process and uh I i didn't have them nor did i want to get them and uh, and and so I thought, well, if if I have abs and if I'm ripped and mm. if I look this way, then they'll want me. And so, I kind of compare it to the uh, Survivor song and you know, on the Eye of the Tiger, and you, you you change your passion for glory because then my my focus shifted from just how I looked mm. and how that would make if I change how I am to make them want me, as opposed to being true to myself. Interesting. How long and did you? And them. Yeah. Wanting. Wanting you for who you are. For who I am. So how long did you transform into someone you think they would want? How long was that process for? Well, it didn't last very long because I completely destroyed myself. So I started. I I I started bodybuilding then. I like, like was like, oh, let me sign up for this bodybuilding competition. And if I can do well in this bodybuilding competition. Then they'll see that. <laughs> Just the logic that goes through my head. They'll <laughs> see that. And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, let's sign her. Like she'll be on a magazine or something and we'll mm. sign her that way. Interesting. How old were you then? 19. Okay. I was 19 then. And uh, I mean, maybe it would have worked if I committed to it. But anyway, the point was, I didn't know what I was doing. I was with this lad who had never trained a girl before. He was a bodybuilder himself, but he was a giant man and uh, <laughs> giant giant man and who had done many competitions and he was training me and my diet then my diet was all over the place and then he put me onto this other guy who gave me this other diet which then I just oh, became man. emaciated and I was trying to wrestle around Japan and all this stuff my body was just hurting but like I was loving how I looked in the mirror because I had these abs and I was like disciplined and my focus was what I was going to eat and how I was going to train and like I had this then sense of ego, like, like, look at how disciplined I can be. I am so much better than everybody because I have this discipline. But ultimately, I was like dying on the inside because I had no energy. Mm. My moods were all over the place. I was like leering at cookbooks of what <laughs> I was going to eat when, when, when this diet finished, and, uh, and, 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 and ultimately, I, I ended up not being able to make it past 10 weeks of this diet. There was two more weeks till the competition. I just, the guy who was trying to me suggested a cheat meal and that was it. Then I just went completely off the rails and couldn't get back on. Wow. And then that, that, that then became a, a, an unhealthy relationship with food for years. Really? Years and years and years, completely destroyed. Uh, how I looked at myself and everything like that and how I valued myself. Um, how and did you value yourself then? On, on how I, on how I lo- looked suddenly, like from somebody who had gone from valuing myself on my substance and what I brought to the table uh, in terms of wrestling and my craft, I was then just now, I was just conforming to what I thought thought they wanted and what society wanted but by then then I was like I don't even know if I want to wrestle anymore maybe that dream is over it's time to be realistic and get a real job and then I ended up being a flight attendant and uh wow. so you were wrestling you were pursuing professional wrestling I guess at the time yeah then you quit to be a flight attendant then well then I was like well 
then I, uh, then I started thinking like, oh, well, maybe I'll be a fitness model because that'll be easy on my body. And or, But I couldn't maintain it because I was so hungry. I just loved <laughs> eating. Like I loved <laughs> eating so much. And uh, but and so then that it, that then I became bulimic and all wow. of these things, um, and it was really just just going from being somebody who cared about about their mind, who 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 thought their mind was powerful, to just thinking that I was a set of abs and a pair of arms, you know, and that was where I put my focus. It took a long time to shake that. How old were you when you shook it? 35. Wow. <laughs> no, 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 quite. But like, um, I think it was a process. It was a process. It was, it was a process. Because I was a flight attendant, hated it, but was still trying. I then did the bodybuilding competition. I came third, by the way. Wow. Out of four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sound, Four sound, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, sounded, it sounded impressive. Um, so, so I did the body button competition. Was like standing up on stage. Oh my goodness! I'm so glad they just everybody didn't have an iPhone back then. But um, <laughs> uh, I, I did the, and I was just like, why am I standing mm. in my underwear showing people my muscles? Like, I, this, this isn't, this doesn't feel like me, you know? Because for some people. For some bodybuilders, it's such an artistic thing. Yes. They are sculpting their body. They are, they, they love it. They love the discipline of it. But for me, it was, it was some sort of a means to an end, some sort of way for me to be validated by society or something that, that, and it just didn't feel authentic and, and, and true to me. It just felt like I was, yeah, I was just trying to be something that I wasn't. Uh. It was just consumed by by my body will be my vessel too. Wow. But if if it looks a certain way, then then I'll be successful and whatever. And then I I, I then I started to realize that like the part of wrestling that I loved it, it wasn't just the training; it was the performance. I loved the performance. I loved the crowd. I loved the creativity. I loved the storytelling. And I think throughout my whole life, I found that storytelling is what draws me more than anything. Like. In school, I was terrible at every subject except English and history because it was just stories. Like it was, it was hearing stories and, and, and learning about these stories. And I rocked at those subjects, terrible at everything else. <laughs> and, um, and, 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 and so then I, I went back to school to study acting. And, uh, mm. Is this in London now or where is this? This is in Dublin. I oh, said so I'm in Dublin, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. But like at 22, I went back to college, studied acting in, in Dublin and then did a year in Chicago. Wow. And that felt like, okay, now now I'm back. Now I'm back a little bit. And then it it, 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 it seemed more like I was part of a creative endeavor. Than, really? When you're yeah, doing yeah. the acting? Yes. Yeah. When did you get back into to wrestling then? So it's funny because throughout this whole time, this whole time, I'm just going, oh, but I felt, felt like this was my purpose and and I gave up on it, but mm. I can't go back. And my mom doesn't want me to go back. And how am I going to go back? Because I've burnt bridges and I, I don't even know if I can do it. And then I had this ego of like, I was good then and now I'll have to go back to training and what if I suck? And all of these things... And I would, I would constantly try and then back off, and I would dip my toe in and back back off, and I, I, I was, I just couldn't let it go. I could not let it go. It would never leave me. And sometimes I would be like, okay, I'm done, I'm done. And like, do you, do you, did you see the wrestler? The with, movie with um, with Mickey Rourke. It was incredible. Incredible. Yeah. I incredible. Saw a it's so times. sad. So Very sad. sad. So sad. And I remember seeing that and, see, and being like, see, this is why I left it. This is why it's so sad. It's such a, it's such a sad business. That would be me, you know? And uh, this old star that's now trying to figure yes. out his life and working at a deli or something, right? Yeah. It's like, ah, I, can't, I, I did the right thing leaving. And then, and then, and then, you know, I would, I would see something. You know, or like I had friends in it that were still doing really? it. Really? And, and I tried to distance myself from it. 
but uh, but there was always a pull and I've kept journals my whole life and you, like if I just go back and read it it's just there's always like a wrestling pull a wrestling wow. pull a wrestling pull and I just never I never I, I, I didn't know how I would get back there and that's why I say you know sometimes you can't plan or you can plan you can try and force things but sometimes the timing of the universe or whatever you want to put it up to is wild it's just wild because when I finished my acting degree and I was trying to get acting work in Ireland I ended up getting stunt work on the Vikings the TV show and uh, and I was like I don't have a clue what I'm doing so they they, they were like you can come down and, and do a stint and I was like yeah I'll do that but I, was like, oh, I gotta I gotta figure something out so I went down to a wrestling school and it was the guy that was teaching the wrestling school Joe that uh, that said, w- would you think about going for a WWE tryout? Because I think you'd get it. Yeah, that was it. And he he had just gotten he had just gotten uh, accepted. He he him and his girlfriend at the time, Rachel, who was one of my best friends, they would both gotten uh, accepted to WWE. And he suggested me go, even though at this time I had decided I was going to move back to New York. I lived in New York briefly, in between my first and second year of college. I was going to move back there. I was going to pursue you know acting trying to get into more theater and when he said that it was just like excited this is it this it was just this pull it was this instinct you know after feeling like i was forcing everything for so many years i was like this is but but the thing is is if if i had gotten signed when i was 19 when i wanted to I wouldn't have ended up where I am now. You know, mm. like I would have been mouthy. I wouldn't have understood life. I would have had this ego. I would have I would have messed everything up. Probably burnt more bridges. And then I would just would have been, who knows what would have mm. happened. But all of these other things that were happening and I was as I was trying to figure out life and I was getting all this experience helped so much. But then I ended up in the perfect place at the perfect time with the perfect people and with this drive to change things and change how the women were booked. Mm. And all of a sudden, what I wanted to do back then didn't seem so crazy now. Mm-hmm. For, for, for a few years, it still seemed a little crazy. But then we got there, we got there. So we got there and we're still getting there. <laughs> so you, you do this scene as like a stunt person uh, yeah. from the TV show. Yeah. And they're like, okay, let's put you through some training to be able to do the stunt training, right? Yeah. And brings you back to kind of like the wrestling roots. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I think you can make this, I guess this is a school for the WWE? Or is uh, it like yeah. a tryout? Yeah, so, so, or... so you go for a tryout. And then if you uh, get that tryout, they, uh-huh. they, they'll um, give you a contract to NXT, which is the developmental okay, gotcha. brand. And then you can go and uh, learn to be a WWE superstar. Wow. So we said... Do the tryout. I yep. think you'll make it and go into kind of the the yeah the underground, the up and coming. And, and as soon as he said it, I was like, oh yeah. And what happened? Oh yeah, with got the it. Tri- the tryout, you got, got it. I got it. But like, I went in there with this mindset of, there is no way they will not want me. Wow. There is no way. Look at my experience. I'm like a full trained actor, but I've also had this experience of main eventing in Japan. And wow. I'm a stunt woman. And I was like, there's there's no, how would they not want me? I've done a bodybuilding competition. Right, right, and right. I like amassed <laughs> all of this wacky experience. Interesting. To where I was like super confident. There's no way that these people are refusing me a contract. And then I was also like, I will die before I quit. Wow. Because they put you through all these drills, which and a lot of people quit. Yeah, yeah, they gave up. How many people? Came, how many people came in when you were there, or how many people were there when you were there, versus I guess a few years later? Well, so so there was a try. Well, the triad there was thirty people. Two people got offered a contract. Mm-hmm. Um, and then how many people? When I started, I was the first. I was the first class of this brand new performance center that they had opened in Orlando. Mm-hmm. What, um, year, what year is this? This is 2013. Okay. And like, yeah, I, I remember my first day and they were like, look to the person left and look to the person right because they're not going to make it. One of you isn't going to make it. Not, you know, it was, it was wow. the, the likelihood is only one of you are going to make it. Of course, many, many of us made it. Um, 
many, many of us made it and, and some have come and gone over the over the years. But uh yeah, I was like, Oh I don't know that I'm gonna make it. <laughs> really? <laughs> well no, like uh outwardly outwardly I could be like I could see why why I wouldn't make it. But there was still this I was so scared of not making it and I was so scared of failing. Really? I was so scared of failing. But there was just this little voice of like, this is what you're meant to do. You will main event wrestling. And with absolutely no reason to believe it, by the way, it was terrible. Like when I came back, I was so mind... Um, can I curse on you? Sure. Sorry. Um, that that I, I, I was so insecure because now I was with by the, the most beautiful women I'd ever seen. These giant behemoths of men that just looked like superstars. And then there was me, the perfectly average girl from Dublin, wow. who just felt like she had something. I felt like I, had, <laughs> I, just, I, I feel like I, I have something. something to offer, something in here, you know. How many people were there? How many men and women are at this first day? Gosh, I, guess? I think there was like there was maybe ten women and like fifty dudes or wow. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were really outnumbered back then. Wow. Really outnumbered back then. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. No, no. This. How did you not lose your confidence going in? Oh, I did. You did. Oh, completely lost, gone. As soon as I walked in that building, woof, gone, gone. It was gone. Anything that I had in the tryout was completely gone, and just continued to just be dwindled away <laughs> as I went through the really? first first few months into, I would say, the first year, the first year, and it wasn't until I had this breakdown and I remember crying from the depths of my soul to my friend Frenchie uh it was April it was April 2014 and I, I I just felt like I was doing everything I could to become better but I wasn't like I wasn't becoming better like I was just in my own way and I remember another one of my friends uh, his wrestling name was Aiden English and I'd actually gone to college with him in Chicago randomly acting wow. colleges wrestling's a little village you know you just meet people they sure. just pop up and uh, like I, I remember him saying to, yeah sometimes you have a bad day maybe you'll have a bad week but nobody has a bad month I was like buddy I've had a bad seven months like I'm I'm screwed and uh, but I remember just thinking like I'm not a bad person. <laughs> like, I'm, I suck right now, but I love this. And at least I'm not a bad person. And for some Ooh. weird reason, that gave me a bit more confidence. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think because maybe there's this old thought of, of wrestling or maybe any sport or endeavor that's competitive where you kind of have to be cutthroat. Mm. And I hate that. Mm. I don't like that. Especially in something like wrestling where you're not doing it on your own. You're not making mm -hmm. history on your own. Everything is, is a, a team effort. Yes, you want to be the best. But like rising tides and all that mm -hmm. jazz. Mm -hmm. race and you got to, everything's a collaboration. Everything's a collaboration. Even when you're competing, you're collaborating. Yeah. But I wasn't going to be able to change the trajectory of women's wrestling by myself i needed a group of them which i was there with who all had the same goal it was myself Stasha, charlotte and bailey and we all and and paige and emma and, and other girls that were there and we all wanted this 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 different uh future for the sport mm. and uh and we were all working together but but there was this this feeling of okay i'm not willing to cut anybody's throat to 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 get on top that made me feel like okay all right mm. well maybe maybe that mentality will help me and I don't need to be I don't need to be the biggest name in in the business I just need to do this I just need to make a living out of it I just need to to mm. be able to tell stories and interesting wrestle and in that first year I guess from you know you said you had this breakdown in April 2014. That was 10 years ago. Um, oh my goodness. Isn't that crazy? A decade ago. Next, <sighs> next month will be a decade. Wow. Um, where did you feel like you were not 
connecting with in that first year? Was it the story aspect, the athlete in aspect? Ring. Was in it? Ring. In ring. In ring. Gotcha. In ring. The story part was what helped me. That's what saved That's my what job. what kept you in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Dusty Rhodes was the promo teacher at the time. And Dusty like loved his his broken toys. The ones that were like rough around the edges, but he saw that had some soul or something something about them. Just just a little something, just a spark. And he he tried to bring that out. And so I didn't know. I didn't know who I wanted to be. I did they, everybody was like, find a character, find a character, right. find a character. So I try out all these stupid characters. None of them worked. No, and of course none of them worked. They were all awful. But like they <laughs> but it but it was it was the trying, it was the Yeah, yeah. It was the being able to put yourself out there and throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. Right. Nothing stuck. But <laughs> but 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 I tried and I kept I kept trying and I think he valued the creativity more mm. than more than the outcome because if somebody came in they were the total package um I can point to there's a, a wrestler called LA Knight at the time um who right now is making big waves in wrestling but at the time he was down there we started on the same day and he had everything. He had it just down. He had it down, you know. So Dusty he had no smooth. more. He was smooth. Yeah. yeah. Dusty was like, yeah, you're great. But he had no more work to do because he already had his act down. Whereas somebody like me was completely <laughs> lost, completely screwed. Had, uh, and, and, and I think I think, I think there was a combination of, of Dusty and William Regal that saved my job. Wow. Many, many times because they saw that there was something, something there in this Irish girl that had wow. not a clue. So that had not a clue because I didn't like look like any of these other girls that were like st st stunners. Um, I, was, I wasn't great in the ring, but there was something when I talked that was unique. Was that different. was unique? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean, from that moment, I guess. Now, are they? Is it like six days a week training? It was so it was like five days a week, and then we would do three shows. So you do Monday. Tuesday you would do um, a school session, which is you'd watch matches, but then there'd be extra training. Gosh, that would have been so fun. The watching the matches. Just, I mean, that whole experience, just uh, like being yeah. a full-time athlete, training, watching, testing, trying, just like. In hindsight. Right. In hindsight. <laughs> but during great. it, but during, during it was. Uh, but I remember that that was one of the things that uh, Triple H would always say, you know, because he was head of developmental, and he was always enjoy this, enjoy this. There's never gonna be. And there was times when I would feel like I was in a Rocky movie and, you know, like I uh, get that, like, and you could enjoy it. But the other part of it was not sleeping because you were always scared that you were going to be on the chopping block. You could be cut like every cut. week. Yeah, yeah. There was, they, they, we called it Black Friday. And you'd come in, you'd get pulled into the office and that was it. And your dream would be over. And, uh, you know, I had several friends that, that got cut and, and, it was devastating and my friend Joe, the reason that I got signed in the first place, who I lived with, he got cut. Mm. And so that was a whole new world to navigate. Um, but but so once once the fear of not being cut subsided, then you could enjoy it <laughs> sure, more. Sure. But when you were scared that you were going to get fired every other day, not enjoyable, not enjoyable at all. So when did you feel like <laughs> I'm making it. Like, when did you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm actually making it, I don't know, in my sport, in society, culturally, financially? When was the moment from 10 years ago to like, I'm arriving? So I think it was shortly after that. Shortly after the breakdown, shortly after the breakdown of, okay, wait, I'm not a bad person. And then I remember coming into promo class, not doing a character, but just cutting an angry promo <laughs> of 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 i am sick of the i put in all of this work i have done this i have done that i have done this blah 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 and 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 this is why i deserve a shot this is why i need to be on tv and i remember cutting that promo and then like people like seeing a bit more of an edge and it wasn't just a hi yeah please don't fire me hi 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 i'm i'm so happy to be here like there was there was this there was now this weird confidence and this um, I wasn't so meek anymore. Like I had a chip on my shoulder and I was ready to fight. 
and then things started to 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 happen there and like then i got on tv one of the worst debuts of all time awful, really awful. oh my what god happened? terrible uh, i i came out there doing the stupid irish jig and i can't <laughs> i can't the irish jig but like you try to dance I, yeah yeah and yeah, yeah. Tried, tried. You this tried thing. to do the Irish dance. I tried to do the Irish dance, like as as hammed up as possible. Oh like, man, like shameless, just shameless. But like at the time, there was this this girl Emma. She was do, doing this wacky dance, and it was like okay, well, like wackiness is getting people on TV. There was, there were just wacky characters left, right, and center, because that was the thing about the developmental system down there. You got the chance to be wacky and you got the chance to try things and fail. And so I failed epically, publicly. On TV. On TV. Ooh. That lives on forever. Oh. That will never be erased from history. But hey, if you can come back from that, you can come back from anything. Let's go. And, and so <laughs> the greatest part of it was like, I didn't even realize how awful it was until like a few nights later. <laughs> And uh, like I remember seeing Triple H and being like, "What did you think?" As if he was like, "Oh yeah, that was amazing." You, you dominated, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But the audience loved me. They they were still they were real positive to me. I think, come on, like I was a little idiot. Like I suppose you couldn't really boo me. Like, God bless her. You know what did she think? What was she thinking? Look at this fool. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and and then and then uh, and then I tried various different things. But I remember. I remember after that and then just having this different perspective and this gratitude that I was able to pay my bills mm. and the food in my fridge was bought by the money that I'd made from wrestling and the roof over my head was paid for by the money that I'd made from wrestling and I was driving a car with the money that I'd wow. made from wrestling and like I were just driving with just tears of gratitude that I could afford these things with the money that I'd made from wrestling because it, it I've never felt like money that I've made from wrestling is real money mm. you know it just doesn't feel like real money because I'm not working <laughs> you know you're having fun I'm, I'm having fun I love I love what I do I love what I do wow. I love it I love it and sometimes and sometimes it's hard and sometimes there's so many opinions and there's you know like our wrestling fans they're so vocal and they're so great but you know the, you take the good with the bad so sometimes you're getting lots of negative opinions on what you're doing or you're getting and so or you or you think creative could, should be this way or you should be booked that way and so you can get bogged down in those things but when it comes to the creative process and I'm putting together a match or I am thinking about a promo. I don't think there's anything bar like playing with my child that mm. makes me feel more alive. Wow. Like I just, I love it so much. And I love just like something coming to me and building from that, you know, just these little seeds of ideas. Like what if we try this? You know, what if we try this? Maybe this will work. And maybe it'll be awful. But that's the greatest <laughs> thing about wrestling is that you, because we do it 52 weeks a year, because we're on the road constantly, you get to tr try and fail so often, but you get to try and succeed so often wow. too. And you never know which way it's going to go. But if you keep trying, you know, sometimes you hit gold. Well, sometimes you don't. Right. Sometimes you think something's gold and other people don't. And, but that's art, right? Like you mm -hmm. do the art for what you want to do and then whatever the audience takes mm. out of it is up to them. Big uh, WWE fan, Rick Rubin, we had on the show. <gasps> and, I love Rick. And he talks about what you just said, making art for you and writing in your journal, in your diary, the things that are meaningful for you, your art, not worrying what people are going to think about it, but having the courage to put it out there and allowing others to see it as well that's like part of the process. Yeah. And uh, he's a big fan, isn't he? Oh, he's a huge wrestling yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his book is... It's amazing. Have you read it? Yeah, it's so yes. good. Read it, listen to it. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, and I, I love, because I just like, sometimes I just, uh, 
I'm like, okay, what, do, what, do, what, what do I need yeah. right now? Universe, you know? tell me. Yeah, yeah. open it up. And then, it's, of course, it's exactly what you need it's in that gone. moment. I love it. Um, but it is, it is that. But the other thing about wrestling, which is so different from any other artistic endeavor, like writing a book, mm-hmm. you have it. You, you, you can take your time. You know, if you're writing a script or whatever, maybe like a movie or a song, if you have an album. But like, say, if you're writing a song, you can just take your time to do that. Wrestling, we don't, we ain't, we ain't got time. Yeah. Like this show is gonna go live <laughs> on TV. We gotta make it at happen 8 now. 8 p.m. And if at 7 p.m. you don't have something, you better find something because we're, we're, we're going to go live. Have you ever not felt like you were prepared before going live and having to come up with something on the spot? A million times. Really? Um, oh, yeah, because now it's different. But uh, it used to be, back in the day, the show would be getting rewritten while the show was going on, wow. live, in front of people. So you would have like an idea of what you're going to say and then somebody comes up, no, 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 you have to say this, find a way to put this in. And so you're okay going out the curtain and changing really? things. As yeah. you're going out, yes, you have to evolve what you're gonna say. Yeah, so and sometimes, and, and that's happened like several th- times, and but it's really exciting. It's scary, but exciting at the same time. Yeah, because time. it's chaos. Yeah. And it's chaos. <laughs> and so whatever comes out is great wow. because you can't, it's it, just organic. It's, it's the, just in the moment. It's, it's the great. ultimate yes and experience. Yes. I love it. It's so exciting. Because you don't know what's going to happen. But something's going to happen. There's been so many times when I've had like, we're putting together a match, but we haven't had the time. And so like you're going out and you think that you have something, but you're not sure. And you're not sure if everybody else is on the same page. But you go out there and something happens. Like something's gonna happen because and, something has to happen. And based on what happens, they might rewrite the next thing and the next thing, and it just keeps evolving, huh? Yeah, because you never go out there and nothing happens. Right. Because that can't happen. Because that would be weird. You're like people aren't just going to stand in the rain, and wait to be told <laughs> yeah. what to do. Someone's gonna to do, say something, something and hit someone, and it's gonna <laughs> go on to the next person. Yeah. And we're just gonna go because that's what has to happen. Yeah. And so it's it's such a. They'll throw you out there. You just figure it out. Yeah. It's such an exciting, addictive business. Wow, that's exciting. I, I told you I've never been to a show, so I got to come and you watch, gotta come. watch you. You got to um, come. It's I'm, the best. I'm curious, when is there a moment, and you've had so many different matches over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, when was the match or the moment that you were in the most flow, that you felt like 100% authentic to you, that the words were flowing, the movement was flowing, like it was all connecting and the audience was connected to you. Gosh, I suppose there's several. Um, like recently, recently I had a match with Trish Stratus. It was a cage match. And it, it, it just felt like, yeah, I'm so present. Everything wow. that it n- needs to happen is happening. And that was back in September. Um, so that's like, th- there's like these big matches that stand out. Because, it uh, you know, it'll often happen on live events and different things. But there's these big moments, these big events built around it. And then um, the, a match that I had with uh, Bianca Belair, WrestleMania 38, one of my favorite matches. One of my favorite stories um, leading up to it. And I was the bad guy and I loved it. I loved that I was having so much fun and she was she's this great athlete and, mm. and this great baby face and she can do everything and uh, and I was getting to because I'd robbed the title from her essentially like I'd, I'd underhandedly beat her yeah and I was going to be able to, to give her back her championship she would beat me for it I wasn't handing it over right, she right, would right. beat me for it but it was that you know her um, redemption story and that was that was so fun to be a part of. And then there was another match that I had in 2018 with Charlotte Flair. It was the last woman standing. But, and that one stands out because I remember it being the first match where I felt confident in it, in the moment. I can do no wrong. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What year is this? It's 2018. 2018, okay. Yeah. Wow. And so there's like big ones that stand out over over time, but yeah. I love all these stories you have in your book, uh, and I want people to get this. It's called The Man, Not Your Average average Girl. Uh, make sure you guys pick up a copy of this because there's so many beautiful stories in here. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about this that you talk about is 
and we mentioned it off camera beforehand that it, I think it was 2019. You were kind of at the top of your, I guess, game. Yeah. In the in the industry, but you also felt like you weren't 100% authentic to you. Is that right? Or you yeah. weren't being the person you fully wanted to be. Yeah. Was yeah. that related to um, just? things that the industry wanted you to do or things you felt like you were to do or is that other personal stuff that was holding you back or what was playing a part in that maybe a bit of a bit of everything mm -hmm. um like i i uh because i was coming from underneath right i was coming from uh being this underdog uh -huh. that the audience loved because she was smiley and happy and you know would do creative things online because she was never getting an opportunity on tv but 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 even though I wouldn't get opportunities on TV necessarily, I was always doing stuff with the digital team or on social media. I would create these little stories, these stupid little, little videos. Little skits and stories. Yeah, and yeah that yeah. I thought were funny and entertaining. And so that the audience could get to know who I was. And then they wanted to turn me heel. They wanted to turn me into a bad guy against Charlotte Flair, who at the time was, uh, she was a good guy, but but she, you know, she's the daughter of Ric Flair and she had multiple title opportunities and was seen very much as a chosen one. And so when they were going to turn me heel, I knew, she knew, kind of a lot of people knew this wasn't gonna be a heel turn. This was gonna be a mega baby face turn for me because now I would get this attitude and this shoulder chip and all that kind of stuff but I think um and that worked to a certain point um because I would rely on on social media things a lot and um and then and then I think I kind of started to put stuff out there into the world and onto the internet that Whereas I would justify as it, it's, it's business and this is making people talk and it's whatever. But I know it hurt people's feelings. Mm. The people that didn't, weren't in on it, you know, like right. it's a different thing when you're in the ring or, you, you know, when you're cutting promos and stuff like that. And I was like, but this is what people want. They want me to be like this. But me as a person mm. didn't necessarily feel I didn't feel good about that, and I would always justify it, but it, it left me feeling icky, I suppose. Interesting. And like... What changed until what moment? Until what moment? What do you mean? Like, when did you change that? How long, when was, did how I long stop was that, that? for? Yeah. It was until I went out and had my child. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. So it was like from, from I would say, mid-2019, then I just felt like it was just forced. That, it all felt very forced. And I didn't have formidable opponents necessarily. I didn't have people that were built up for me on the backside. So I was trying to, I was trying to um, like, the, like I was the champion. I had this historical moment of being the first woman to main event WrestleMania. But then my first opponent was somebody who the audience didn't know, who uh, was, was, was quite green. And it, you know, none of this was her fault, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't have been my first opponent. So it just then things just didn't feel like they were right. And, you know, I felt like I, I was trying this, still trying the social media mm. thing that just felt inauthentic. And and I just, I don't know, I felt like I put out some, some stuff that I wish I didn't. You know, I just wish I didn't put that out yeah. there. Um, because, you know, social media can be a great tool, but also can be horribly negative um, and it can cost real relationships if people aren't in on it um, and so I didn't I don't I don't I didn't I didn't like that. I, th I think whatever I will always say whatever you want to say about me whatever you want to say about me is fair game if we can make money on TV <laughs> let's right, right. make money but not everybody's like that yeah, and I yeah. know not everybody's like yeah. that and so you have to there is such a level of trust in what we do. And I think I, I broke that trust for, for, for several people. And then, um, and it just didn't, just didn't feel good. It yeah. just didn't sit right with, with who Rebecca Quinn is. Mm. And so even though I could justify it, Becky Lynch, it's business, it's right, business, right. it's business. 
at the end of the day, my gut said no. My gut, my gut was was no, and I was going against it, and it felt inauthentic. Um, and then I went and and had my daughter, and then I haven't, I haven't relied on that since. Really, and I felt just so much better. Really? So 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 much better. So much lighter. I don't put stock in it. Mm. Um, I tell my stories on TV. Uh, I tell them in the ring. I tell them with my promos. Mm-hmm. I don't need to be tweeting mean stuff of people <laughs> on yeah. a ra- random Sunday afternoon. You yeah. know what I mean? You talk. You know. You talk about your 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 daughter having your daughter, and also kind of the fear and insecurity you had about, I guess, telling the WWE about being pregnant and how is this going to affect your career? How did you navigate that? You know. It's just hot to, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I. Uh, did you think you would still have a career if you had a child, or and you, had you seen someone do this before? And... No, that was the thing. I'd never seen somebody do it before. Wow. And so that's why I felt like I had to do it because. Interesting. Wait a minute. Why should I have to choose? Mm. You know, why should I have to choose? Apart from the obvious point of time off, yeah. but people get. <laughs> People get injured all the time. Right. You can you can tear your ACL and you're out for a year. So why can't I be out for a year because you're pregnant? I bring a child into the world. Interesting. Stuff happens. And so stuff is gonna happen. And this is a new world. And uh we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find a way to make it happen so that women can still be superstars, still be entertainers, mm. still be on top, but also be mothers if they want to be. You know, oh. that's that that was my feeling. Like, why not? Why can't I? And so for better or worse, I was going to be the crash test dummy. <laughs> but I just felt like, all right, I've I'm, I've changed the game in one way. Mm. You know, obviously not by myself with a lot of help. <laughs> sure, sure. You know, I've been part of this change. Let me continue be, to be part of change. Let me push some. Let me push some. Some boundaries and see Some what boundaries. you can create. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Let me make life more hard on myself, but also, also way, way better on myself because now I have, uh, now I have a, another purpose. Wow. And, uh, and 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 life, life is just so much better. With it's way it. better now. Huh? So, oh, it's so much better. What's the? Th- I mean, you talk about it here also going through, you know, different relationships, personal relationships that didn't work out that you were stuck in and. Felt like you should have been out of much sooner. I was telling you before that I, I'd probably done that five or six times in my life where I stayed in relationships too long when I knew, trying to force them when I knew it wasn't really the right thing for either of us. Um, when did you meet your husband? Did you think you could be in a relationship with someone in the business as well? And what is the thing you love about him the most? So many things. Um, I met him first in 2014. I was oh. an extra. I was an extra, and he was part of the Shield, which was like the freaking Backstreet Boys of wrestling. Wow. You know what I mean? Like he was a major star, and I remember just like standing around there awkwardly, like hi, 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 trying to introduce myself there. And then this guy comes over to me, and it's Seth Rollins, and he introduces himself, and he says, "Hi, I'm Colby. What's your story?" And then I'm just like, blah, and I just like vomit all these words and my life history <laughs> up until that point. And, and I just felt so comfortable talking to him. Mm. And, but that was just my friend. That was just, that, you know, that was, that was Seth Rollins, who was just such a, a great, nice guy. who was so down to earth. He was this mega star on TV, but was just really nice to me. And uh, over the years, then we built up this friendship and I always just used to get so excited to see him Wow! and like uh, you know like he would always I would always go up and tell him a stupid joke and he would always tell me I was the worst and then walk off (laughs) like I just loved those interactions it was great and uh, you know and we became closer and he was always there for me and he was such a good friend and then you know he was so smart about wrestling so I would go to him for wrestling advice and everything but you know that one of us was always in a relationship or 
And also, I did, never wanted to get involved with any wrestlers. Mm. I did not want to get involved with any wrestlers because that would be bad news. And what would happen if we broke up? And right, inevitably breaks up. And then in like 2019, <laughs> early 2019, like we started like talking a bit more. He had just broken up with her, his girlfriend. I had just broken up with somebody I'd been seeing for a um, short little fling. And, uh, and, and, you know, I was like the man now. And I was like uh, feeling myself. I was single. Be- yeah. I was single Becky. I was, you know. Crushing it. Yeah, I was crushing it. You know, I was having fun. I was free and so like we started talking and i was like yeah i can have my fun (laughs) with this cock guy and then and then like we started like seeing each other a little bit but i knew that he was like wanting to sow his wild oats and all this and all of a sudden i was like wait wait a minute no no what are we doing no we can't do this we're two good friends we're two good friends and like i can't so if i'm like yeah, whatever. I don't want to get into a relationship yeah. with you. Then I'm not. I'm not gonna feel anything. And I'm not that kind of a person yeah. too. Like I like a relationship. And so, uh, and so I, 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 uh, I was like, no, no, no. Uh, actually, no. Sorry. We'll just be best friends. We'll sure. be best friends. That's what you want. You just want to be best friends with me because I'm a great friend. And uh, he was like, no, 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 that's not what I want. And I was like, it is, it is what you want. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so then, then we tried this friendship thing. But he was like, do you still want to hang out when we're on the road next week? And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. And then, and then I was like, yeah, we can, we can stay in the same room. That'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, right. And yeah, 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 right. Then, then, yeah, then, then. Then we were friends turned into lovers quickly. Yeah, 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 wow. yeah. And then, like, eight months later, we were engaged. Wow! Uh, look at that. A, a year, a year later, <laughs> I uh, Rue was on the way, and then, wow. um, and and now we've been married for nearly three years. We've been together over five years, and he is, he is the best. He's just wow. the best. He's the thing that I love most about him. I don't know if there's one thing, but he's so empathetic mm. like so i'm irish right i can tell uh and i'm fiery and uh i can be judgy mm. he assesses everything and like he's so forgiving and understands where everything where everyone's coming from and really assesses everything from like a 360 point of view almost immediately and he's so patient and he's the best father and he's so generous and he takes care of everybody. Everybody wow. around takes care of his family, his friends, his society, like his community. Like he gives back. Like he started wrestling. Um, you know, he, is, he was called up on the main roster and almost immediately wanted to open a wrestling school to give back to the wrestling community to help train people. He's a big coffee connoisseur, wanted to open a coffee shop in oh, cool. in his town so that people could enjoy coffee the way that he wants. He's just, he's he's unbelievable. He's, um, he's the best person I know. Mm. He's the best person I know. And he's like funny and he's so smart. He's just great. And then he's like this wrestling savant and so selfless. In, in in so many ways. Like I I could I could write a book about how great this man wow. is. He's great. That's beautiful. I just say it all the time, like, oh, I looked out. Look at me. I did great. That's beautiful. <laughs> I did great in life. And we're just it's it's I've never had a relationship like it. And we have such a happy little family. I mean, it's not perfect. Of course it's not perfect. Nothing is perfect. We have disagreements from time to time, mostly me. (laughs) Me disagreeing with something or getting annoyed at something. Um, And him patiently (laughs) uh, trying to rectify the situation. Um, But, you know, we get to do what we love. We get to travel with our daughter. Ah, it's just great. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's just great. And it's not always easy, obviously, sure, you know, sure. traveling 52 weeks a year with a three-year-old um, isn't always easy. Being all over the place, never really having a settled home life. 
there's all the things that go into it. But when, when we just break it down, when we stop worrying about the micro details of, oh, well, they should have done this on TV or whatever it is that we might, we're like, oh, I feel like, you know, I thought this was great and people don't seem to like, mm. whatever it is that you could possibly get upset about, we have to look at it and go, how lucky are we? Wow. that we get to have this family we get to do what we love we get to get paid well for it we get to travel we have this amazing magic daughter and wow. she she gets to grow up in a house full of love like that's ah, beautiful stop the it's lights good life. it's great it's a good life it's great i'm so lucky wow i Bes did good this little average girl did good it did good did good besides uh besides your husband who would you say are the three most influential people in your career over the last oh in my career over the last you know 15 years who are the three people uh that influenced you the most and what were the the lessons each one of them taught you gosh i suppose uh mick foley would be would would be number one he's the reason that i got into wrestling i loved him and he was different and he was different than everybody else mm. but that was what he accentuated. He didn't try to be like everybody. He didn't try to look like he 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 relied on his uniqueness and his uh, unique ability to cut a promo and tell a story. And then of course he wrote a best selling book and so that you know, all these things that I wanted to do. And then you meet him in person and then anybody who says don't meet your heroes because you'll only be disappointed. Um Maybe maybe they're not talking about the wrestling industry because anybody who I grew up idolizing has been nothing but amazing. Wow, he's number and, one. And Mick Foley was was okay. was one of them. Um, John Cena, mm. amazing. Just he incredible. seems like a great guy. He is a great guy. He is a great guy. What he, was the big lesson he taught you? Um, who are you? Who are you? I don't know who you are. That's what he said to me. I, like, I would go to him, I would ask him for advice. He was like, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. And I would get so mad and I was, because the people would be chanting my name. I was like, well, they knew. Because I've always had this connection with the audience where they would chant for me, even even when I didn't have an established character or whatever. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was always a connection there. Huh. We were buds. I think because we both love wrestling, you know? Yeah. I love wrestling, they yeah, love wrestling. Yeah. Let's have a wrestling Let's talk party, about it. you yeah, know? Yeah, Let's yeah. talk about it. Um, but John didn't know who you but were? John cuts through the... He, he does not tell you what you want to hear. He is honest. And I love that about him. Because you will get an honest response. Mm. And in a world that is... That can often be called fake. Yeah. Honesty is wow. is very important. Um, when he meant "Who are you?" What was he saying? Like, who are you? Who when you walk out the curtain? Who are you? Like, I don't know who you are. You, you, there's nothing that defines you. Who am I? I'm Superman. I'm mm. Superman. And then and then I walked out. I'm the man. And then of was course that then after, I changed. So after you... after well then then I found out who I was and I became the man. And really? then it was distinguishable. I am the man. Now I know who you are. Wow. You are the top dog. And what? then I became big time Bex. And I was, okay, I know who this person is. And um, So how much, how long after John said to you, who are you? When the... Oh, a couple of years. Oh, it took a while it still. It took a while. Took a, took a while. So took when, you, a while. when you became the man, did you go to him and say... No, he came to me. What did he say? He said, you did it. He said, I've said that to a lot of people. I'm not... Hardly anybody's done it. You did it. You were the man. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like a... Wow. Whoo, thanks, John. John's, 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 John's the best. Wow. Um, okay, and the third person? Uh, the Rock. Wow. The Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He um, also incredible. Like the busiest, biggest star on the planet. But if you are stuck for something and you need advice, he will be there in in a heartbeat and be able to help you with that and talk you through anything and listen to your concerns and put them in perspective and uh, 
yeah and 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 just be there just mm. just be there for you as a friend when and as a mentor wow when he's also just like the busiest right person on the planet and he takes that time out what to, was, to do that what was the thing he said to you maybe behind the scenes backstage that no one else got to really experience but he said to you that impacted you one of the things that he said to me uh that i still think about and think about regularly is what do you think about in the quiet of the night when everybody's gone to sleep when there's nobody around um what is it that you dream of yeah. and keep that at the forefront of your mind and the other thing that he said to me i think that, um was when my dad passed away mm. um and i you know everybody tries to comfort you and i never know what to say when somebody passes away to somebody else like, sorry for your loss and you know you're sending love and, and he said uh and now he's always with you and that and even even saying it now just makes me feel a certain because now he is always with me you know and uh that'll get me uh yeah so wow it's beautiful yeah trust the rock to always know what to say you know? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Rebecca, this has been a beautiful conversation and, and I could go for another few hours with you, but I want to be mindful of time. Uh, I want people to get your books, beautiful stories, lessons uh, about someone from, you know, really a small town, small country who was able to become one of the biggest stars in the world and all the different life lessons and stories along the way, which are really inspiring. So I want people to get a copy of your book, uh, The Man, Not Your Average Average Girl. Make sure you guys check this out by Rebecca Quinn really inspiring stuff and just some really cool stories in here that I think people will like, whether you're into WWE or not. You know, again, I've never been to a match, but I thought all this stuff was fascinating. So I'm, I'm coming one of these days, I'm gonna be there. Uh, I have three final questions for you, Rebecca. Um, the, the first one is called the three truths. It's a hypothetical question. So I'd like you to imagine, if you can, a moment, that you get to live as long as you want in this world but it's your last day, many years away. You get to pick as old as you wanna be, but eventually you gotta turn the lights off for yourself. And in this hypothetical world, um, you have to take everything with you. So no one has access to this book, our conversation, any piece of content that's ever been out, uh, anything you create from this moment moving forward, it has to go with you when you leave. But on the last day, you get to leave behind three lessons to the world three things you know to be true, and that's all you would ever be able to leave behind to everyone else. What would be those three truths for you? To believe in yourself. Um, my dad said, said something, and uh, it's, it's from the Bible, but he misquoted it, but I, and it's a quote that I use in this book too, and uh, he misquoted it, but I like his version better. And it's, uh, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will complete you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will destroy you. Wow. And uh, I love that. I love that. It's essentially being authentic mm. to whatever it is inside. Um, and the other one, the third one, uh, I will use the most polite language that I can. Just don't be a just, just, just be nice to people. Be good to one another, you know? I think that's what we need in this world more than anything. And if you want an outlet for people not being good to each other, mm. watch wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> watch wrestling where they're not being nice to each other but it's agreed upon. It's contained. It's contained. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. contained and it's controlled. Because I think I think more than ever, especially in a world where negativity is a hot commodity, where the algorithm loves it, it is more important. Where we thought that we left the bullies in the schoolyard, but we don't. They're online every day. They're constantly telling you. They're constantly chirping in the, their opinions. I think we need more than ever just to be good to one mm -hmm. another. That's beautiful. Um, Rebecca, I want to acknowledge you for a moment for 
I really enjoy just getting to know you for the last hour and a half and your, your authenticity. So I want to acknowledge you for you stepping into your authentic, honest, funny, and kind self. It's been really cool to get to connect with you for a moment. I, want to, I acknowledge you for the journey you've been on. I think it's really inspiring to see someone again from your town and your country, you know, do all the different things you did, leave a dream, come back and pursue it for years to get to where you are. And also I acknowledge you for being the man in your sport and also being a mother, a wife, uh, you know, and a woman that is living a personal life as well and making both of them work at a high level. I guess you said it, that there's challenges still and you guys aren't perfect, but being able to live your dreams and be a mom and show up for your daughter, I think it's just a really beautiful thing. So I wanna acknowledge you for the journey that you're on and your ability to bring joy and entertainment and uh, inspiration to so many people every single week. So it's it's really cool. Thanks for that. Yeah, of course. Thank uh, you for having me. Yeah, of course. I have one final question that I want people to get the book. Before I ask the final question, where can we support you the most? Where can we follow you? And, and how can we be of service to you right now? Well, you can follow me on I think it's at Becky Lynch WWE <laughs> or is it WWE Becky Lynch? I think it's at WWE at Becky Lynch WWE, and that's my Instagram, Twitter. I think my TikTok following. All your social. media All my channels. social yes, medias. Yes. I think it's all the same. Um, and then my book, available. Everywhere. Everywhere. It's exciting. How else can we be of service? Watch wrestling. Watch wrestling. <laughs> Watch wrestling. Get the book. Share Read with the a friend. Book. Yeah. Um, final question, Rebecca, what's your definition of greatness? Gosh, I think uh, living a life that feels authentic to you. Mm. I think that's that's it. Whatever, whatever it is that you want to do without the noise, without the pressure, whatever, whatever it is that you feel is 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 authentic. I think that's the that's greatness. Mm. That's greatness putting out what you want to in the world. Yeah, I, something I say in the book is that the audience comes last. And I believe that. I, I, I'm, not, um, I'm not making it for them. I'm making it for me. And it turns out that when you make something truly for yourself, you're doing the best.